All right, so we've talked a little bit about this and um, we're gonna kind of fill in some gaps now about all these different types of data that we can work with in, in R. So first we're gonna talk about um, one dimensional data. And we've talked about some of the data classes that we could possibly have within um, the data vector type. So we've talked about ca character, um, which you know are alphabetical strings um, or just a single letter and those have quotes around them. We've talked about numeric, which is some sort of numeric number value. Um, we're gonna talk about some others called integer and another one called double, which are a specific class of numeric or subclass. We'll talk about factors, uh, which is basically something that's a categorical type of variable, um, which has some sort of order to it. We'll talk, talk about logical, variables, um, which is like flipping a coin, true or false. And then we'll talk about special types of dates and times. So um, we've seen this a bit already. Um, you know, we can have punctuation and we can have spaces, but as long as we put things within quotes, um, we're gonna have our, our character class. And then here's our numeric with some number values. And so this, this was pretty straightforward. But we've also already seen that this can already get a bit tricky. Um, so if we have a combination of numeric values and we put in something that's a character, it's automatically going to become character by default. Um, and then if we put quotes around numeric values, R will interpret that as a character. See, there's a couple of chat comments. Oh yes, yes, we're gonna do a lot more about data visualization. We'll have a whole day dedicated to it. Okay, so like I said, there's some subclasses of the numeric class, which include integer and double. So integer is a whole number basically. Um, and so it's a sequence of numbers that we can create using the seek or which is short for sequence function um, to create sequences of integers. Um, so you could do it this way manually, which we've already done before using the combine function. Um, but you can also use the seek function to do this much, much more quickly. And so someone asked me actually when we were introducing um, the combine function, how would you do this to create something that's 100 uh, in length? And so you could do it that quickly, just like this. And so we could assign this to x, and now x is 1 to 100. So it's a pretty helpful function. Um, and if we look at the class of x, we see that it's an integer. There's also a, a function called type of which is going to give the subclass. Um, in this case, they're the same, but we'll see in a second why this could be helpful. Okay, so double is this other numeric type and it's basically for anything that's not a whole integer. So something that has fractional or decimal values. And it actually, the, why is it called double? That sounds a little bit strange. Um, it's actually a, a fairly common programming term called double precision. So that's where that comes from. There's a link here that describes more about what this means, but basically it's more precise than just this integer form of a number. Um, so again, you could do this um, by using the combine function. In this case, we're, we're adding a decimal or fractional value here. Um, so when we use the class function on this, we see that all we get out of it is that it's numeric, but when we use type of, we can get further information that it's double. I will say when these types of variables are used in a tibble, we will get more information. We'll get the type of information, which is nice. And you, you've probably seen that already that we've seen, we've seen double. So here we are, uh, we, we've, this is just using the data that we've just made um, for the X and Y. And I'm calling them xvar and yvar, 
within the tibble function. So this is to create a tibble. Uh, and I can do it just like this by taking two vectors and naming them. And here we see that the integer variable is shown here as int, which is short for integer. And the double variable is shown here as double. So that is helpful. And uh, you could also use glimpse if this was a data frame and get the same type of information. Uh, that was a double, that was kind of a pun. I meant actual function type of, <laughs> but you would also get the same type of information. That was a terrible joke. Okay, uh, so now moving on to logical classes. So this can be really helpful for statistics. Um, if we're doing an analysis where we have cases and controls or something like that, um, you know, we'll have situations where we might be comparing two groups, then we might run into some logical variables. Um, so one important thing to note here is when you're creating a logical variable, you just use the word true or false, but you do not use quotes. If you use quotes, then similar to when you use numbers, R is going to think that that's a character. Uh, you can uh, use a couple of functions to check what class it is, uh, to check if it is a particular class. That is, um, obviously, class and type of will tell you what class it is. But if you're curious about whether it is numeric, whether it is character, um, you can use this is dot class underscore character, which we'll see in a second. Or you can use as instead of is a two, two cores um, between classes. And we'll see that in just a second. So first, just looking to check, um, we're asking, is this vector character? The answer would be false. If, is this vector numeric? The answer is true. Um, and you know, so on and so forth. This is true for character because it's, it's uh, characters, obviously, and uh, it is not numeric. Um, and this has even further functions like is integer, as you see. Um, so is x an integer? Yes. Um, and there's also double as well. So that is not a double. So it's nice to be able to check that uh, if you didn't want to make a tibble out of it or, or do something like that. Um, so now we're, we can also change this is to an as and coerce. Um, so we can um, basically coerce this uh, function, or sorry, this vector of numer numeric values that are, you know, by default number into character. And here we see that now we've added the quotation marks around it. Or here we can undo this and make it numeric using the as numeric function. Um, similarly, if we don't want to have quotes here and we want this to actually be logical, we can use as logical and we can go between inter integer and double. Um, so right now we're seeing that x is not double, but we could make it double. And then type of now it's double. So that's how we can switch from class to class. But sometimes it's not going to work out really seamlessly. And then when we do that, we're going to get any values for values that can't be coerced. So here we have. Uh, 7a, that's not going to coerce to numeric very well, so that becomes an na. Here we have an unknown value, which nicely becomes na in this case, if we're trying to convert to logical. Um, and then there's even as date, which we can um, convert certain values, which we'll, we'll talk further about in a second, to, to date with a function called as date. And uh, again, if something is not quite exactly formatted right. Like for the issue here is that 
we have the wrong number for, for days here, so it can't be converted to daily. Okay, factors. A factor is a special type of character um, class. And in this case, we're mostly thinking of categorical or qualitative variables. So generally speaking, words. Um, although you can use a numeric value uh, as a type of character as a factor. Um, but don't worry about that too much right now. Uh, so we can use factor to convert things to a factor. Um, so here we have small, medium, large vector, um, which as we can see is, is a categorical variable that has some sort of order to it. Um, and if we look at the class here, it's first going to assume that this is just character, but we want it to, we want R to realize that this is a factor so we can say so using the factor function. And now when we check the class, it says factor. Um, now when we check out this variable, or sorry, this, this vector um, itself, we'll see that it has this extra little information here called levels. Um, and so it has it in the order of, um, this is kind of a bad example, but we'll talk more about this in depth tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, I think it's tomorrow or day after tomorrow day after tomorrow in class time, because that would be Monday or Tuesday. Oh, geez, a lot of, lot of things <laughs> in the way there. There's the, the weekend and everything. So, um, but anyway, this is by default going to be in alphanumeric order. So we see that large starts this level, uh, which is not what we would want. And we'll go into depth on that. So don't worry about that right now. Okay, um, but if you, had something as a factor, R automatically thought it was a factor, you don't want it to be, you can always use as character, or as numeric to take it back. Okay, so then how do we create some of these variables and vectors? Um, so there's a really helpful function that stands for repeat, um, which is REP. Um, and it has two arguments that are really helpful. Um, and it can specify basically how many times each thing should be repeated um, and how many times the entire set should be repeated. So here we have black and white and we're gonna repeat each uh, three times. So it does black three times and then white three times. If we have just the times argument equals three, then it'll do the whole set or list of, um, of elements and it will repeat them three times. Um, and then you can do combinations of the two. So here we're doing, we should have each two times. So we have black twice, white twice, and we're gonna repeat that twice because of the times argument. It can be a little bit tricky. Um, so sometimes you have to play around a little if, if that's not quite intuitive to you. Um, Sometimes though, we actually wanna have numeric values that are random um, and, um, oh, sorry, not, not quite there. That'll be the sample set. Uh, sometimes we wanna like have a, a large, we wanna specify how to make a sequence in a bit more detail. So we've already seen how we can use seek to make integers, um, but we can also use it to make double uh, numeric vectors. So we can specify from where we want to start to where we want to go. And we can say by what increment. Um, so here we're going from zero to one and increasing by 0 0.2 each time. Um, we can also instead, you cannot use by and length at the same time, but you can use length out to specify how many um, numeric values we want overall. And so this is, uh, created, which I couldn't do by default in my head very well, but going from negative five to five with 10 different values in between. And with that, uh, we will start on the lab. I see some questions though about what does double mean? Yeah, so double precision. So we, it's a little more precise than just having the integer level of something. Um, so, you know, we could have something like, 
this and this, uh, if we look at type of, should say that it's double, but if I were to coerce this to integer, it would become one, one. Um, and so we can see that that's, that's not as precise as, oops, as looking at this, this, you know, further breakdown with the decimal and fractional values. Okay, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed creating some data in that lab and, and learning about set seed, which is kind of magical. Um, we don't have a lot of time left, so I'm just going to get through a little bit more of the lecture and we're going to pick up tomorrow. We had a little breathing room in the schedule, so we'll have some more time tomorrow to finish and um, start on the new material. So I'm going to briefly introduce two dimensional data classes. Uh, we've talked a bit about them with data frames and tibbles, but I'm going to talk about some other options which can actually be even more dimensions. Um, so we've talked about data frames and tipples, like I said, which look like a table, but there's also an option called matrix. And this can be really useful if you're doing linear algebra and you have some mathematical um, operations that you'd like to do that are great for, for matrices. Um, in which case everything, it's basically like your data frame or tipple, but the difference is that they're all the same class. And typically if we're talking about linear algebra, they're gonna be numeric. So we can make one by taking a data frame and coercing it into being a matrix and it'll behave like a matrix actually, even if we don't um, overtly refer to it as one, but to, to do this, we would, for example, here's the iris data set that we're looking at here. Um, and we see that it's a data frame. We could select out, we're saying that we don't want the species column because that's a character column and we only want the numeric values. Um, so we could remove that using select. Um, and at this point it's a data frame and making it a tibble. Um, and making this iris mat. I'm taking just the head so that we can make a small matrix because this is 150 rows and I only want six. Uh, and then if I type as matrix, I can see here the output of the matrix version of this data frame. So if you're using linear algebra or something, that's, that's something to check out. Otherwise, you probably won't need to use it much. If you do genomics research, sometimes there's cases, but another option is lists, which actually can have a lot of dimensions. So it's created with a function called list, uh, which is fairly straightforward. Uh, the cool thing about lists is it can hold any type of um, of other data object. And so you could have vectors, matrices, um, ideally, probably you're gonna use it to have multiples of the same type of data. And then you can apply functions across multiple data frames, for example. But it's possible that maybe you're doing something that has vectors and data frames and matrices. In this case, we're showing that we have a vector that we're making another vector um, and a, a matrix. And we put them all together. But this is a bit more advanced. So we're just kind of making you aware that it exists, um, but we're not really gonna go into it too much. Um, and just another thing to point out, you can name the individual pieces of your list so that it's a little clear what, what the pieces are. Um, but again, we're, we're not going to go into too much of that. Um, but it is nice if you're doing something across a bunch of data frames, like you maybe read in several files that are similar, like a survey and you have different years, 
can be useful for that. Um, there's also some date classes, which are helpful. So the date class is pretty straightforward. It's a date class. It's going to be day, time, uh, day, month, year type of thing. Um, this other class, POSIX CT, is, is for hours, minutes, and seconds. So it has the date, including more precision all the way down to hours, minutes, and seconds, which is good for some types of monitoring data. And so we would recommend, if you're interested in using that type of data, to check out the Lubridate package. It's really, really helpful. It's a, a Tidyverse package. I don't recall if it's loaded actually with Tidyverse. We'll have to check that. I don't think it is um, because it's not generally something you need very often unless you're working with date data. Um, and so um, that's a great package to check out. We're not gonna go too much into it again because it's not something that comes up a lot, but for some of you, it might be something that's really important. So um, just wanted to point out there's a couple of functions like YMD, which stands for year, month, date, which can help you convert characters, which is what ours is typically first going to think of your dates into um, being now a date class. Or in this case, uh, month, day, year, if that's the way that your dates are written, then you would want to use MDY instead of YDM. And so that's the rest of the um, data classes lecture. We're going to work on the lab tomorrow. And if you're interested, there's extra slides about how to use dates with Lubridate, if that's something that you need to do. And thank you. Yeah, Ava checked. Indeed, Lubridate does not automatically load, so you'd have to install Lubridate and then do library lubridate if you wanted to work with it. Okay, so coming down here, we'll go back to day four. Oops, here it is. All right, so we were talking about classes, um, that were two-dimensional. We've talked a lot about data frames and tipples, but we introduced this concept called the matrix. Um, not the matrix like the movie, but anyway, uh, it's, <laughs> it's like a, a data frame or a tipple in that it looks like a table. It has rows and columns, but in this case, they're all composed of one type of class. So typically they're numeric, which allows you to do lots of nice linear algebra. And so you can convert to a matrix using the as matrix function. Um, again, I'm just going briefly through these since we went through them yesterday. Uh, the list function is helpful for creating um, data objects called lists that can contain multiple um, data objects inside of it. And so it could have a list of vectors, it could be like here we have a vector of characters, a vector of numeric values, but it can also mix and match. It can have matrices, it can have data frames, it can be tibbles. Um, typically though, you're gonna see it for multiple tibbles or data frames so that you can perform something across lots of different data frames together. Um, it's a bit more advanced, but it's nice for you to know what this is in case you encounter it. And we just wanted to point out that you can also name the pieces of the list or the elements of the list, which is similar to how you would in a tibble or a data frame. Okay, and then we talked about, oops, how there's dates and the this class uh, POSIX CT, which has dates and hours, minutes, seconds, so date and time. And that the Luber date package is helpful for that. And to create a date, you need to, you can use the year, month, day if you have your date in a notation that works for your month, day. There are other um, functions that help you do this for other formats, but we're just going to cover a couple, which is year, month, day, and month, day, year. And, you know, it, it just goes according to whatever makes sense for your data. 
So that's it. So we'll move on to um, the data classes lab part two and finish that up. <laughs>